Today is Sunday, January the 11th, and this is News from the Front. So this is part two of our Software 6.1 update. The previous video, which you can click on here, talked about all the changes that apply to all cars, regardless of whether you have the new autopilot hardware or not. This video will focus on the changes that only apply to the autopilot hardware. And there's some pretty big improvements. One quick thing before we get into the detail of this video. I don't have 6.1 on my car yet, and I don't have the autopilot hardware. So I can't demonstrate most of the features. I do have a friend who has 6.1 and autopilot, and I've been testing it, and I mentioned a little bit about that in the video. Uh, so apologies for the lack of screenshots and the lack of video uh, of real-world examples during this video. Uh, I hope it doesn't detract from your enjoyment. So with software version 6.1, Tesla has introduced what it calls TACC, Traffic Aware Cruise Control. Other companies call it Adaptive Cruise Control. So TACC will monitor the speed of the car in front. So when you have cruise control enabled, so you're, you've got the cruise set to 70 miles an hour and you're going up the freeway, if the car in front slows down, then the Tesla will slow down appropriately. And you can set the distance between one and seven car lengths, although when we tested it, it seemed quite a bit more than that, but the distance is adjustable. Um, and so the Tesla will slow down to follow the car in front and maintain that distance. Then as the car in front speeds up again, the Tesla will speed up again. There's also uh, an acceleration overtake mode. So the assumption is that the car, cars in the next lane are moving faster. So if, you, if the car in front of you is slowed down below your set speed, so say you've set your speed to 70, the car in front is doing 60, you want to overtake. If you have an acceleration uh, overtake turned on, when you press the turn signal, the car will begin to accelerate and close the gap on the car in front, allowing you to merge much more smoothly into the lane next to you. Uh, it will slightly overshoot your, uh, the set speed and then will slow back down to maintain uh, the 70 miles an hour or whatever you, you're doing. Now that will only happen above 45 miles an hour. So that's really designed to work on the freeway. It's not designed to work around town. But TACC will work around town generally. It's only the acceleration overtake, which requires a minimum 45 speed. One thing I forgot to mention is what happens if you initiate the acceleration overtake and then don't pull out to overtake the car in front. Um, well, the car accelerates and approaches the car in front of you. And then once it gets about half of your set distance away from the car in front, it will slow down and, and match the speed and then gradually drop back again and disengage that acceleration overtake. If the car in front of you slows down to a stop, then the Model S will slow down to a stop. If the car stops only for a couple of seconds, then the Model S will pull away when the car in front pulls away. Up to about 10 seconds, it will show a hold um, display on screen. Uh, blue initially, but then it will change to gray. If the car in front is stationary for more than 10 seconds, then the Tesla won't automatically pull away. So you've got two choices. You can either just press the accelerator briefly and the car will begin to accelerate and then speed up to match the speed of the car in front. Or you can just press the resume button. Now, in fact, you can pull the, the cruise control stalk towards you, which is the equivalent of resume, uh, and that will uh, start the car as well. Tesla has also introduced something called forward collision warning. The idea is that uh, under TACC the car will only use a certain amount of deceleration, a limited amount of deceleration, and there could be particular circumstances where you have to brake quite heavily. Say for example a car suddenly pulls in front of you. Um, the Model S will not brake harshly automatically, so it will uh, throw up a warning on screen and as the driver you have to respond uh, and brake more harshly than TACC would otherwise do. There's also a feature called Auto High Beam, although when I was using it it's more like Auto Low Beam, really. So you can turn High Beam on and the car will monitor both cars around you and urban streetlights. So if it sees a car coming towards you or you are following another car or it senses streetlights, it will automatically dim the headlights. It will only go on to High Beam 
when it doesn't see any other cars or if it doesn't spot street lights. So last night I tried TACC and I tried the auto high beam uh, in both an urban situation and in a dark country road situation and everything worked flawlessly. It's a very simple, very good implementation and I must admit I am very impressed and very envious that I don't have the autopilot hardware on my car. So that's it, lots of changes. Um, one comment about software updates. Everybody prays and hopes that they are going to be one of the first people to get the new software update when it comes out. We have not been able to figure out how Tesla decides which cars get software updates when. I don't have 6.1 yet. Uh, it's only been out three days. It might come tomorrow, it might come next week, it might come next month, it might be three months. Um, we've never been able to figure it out. So if you are a Model S owner, then be patient. It will turn up eventually. If you visit a service center for any reason, say you, your annual service is due, Tesla will usually load the latest software version for you. Not guaranteed, but usually. Um, the story is that Tesla batches up the updates into certain car configuration groupings. So you may be lucky, you may be not. Um, these new software updates are definitely worth it. So pay attention and watch out for that little notification coming up on your car display. All right, that's it for uh, today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll try and post another couple over the next few days. Lots more to talk about. Uh, the Tesla website has just been updated today. I need to uh, give you an update on that. Uh, lots going on with the Gigafactory, all kinds of other news. So watch out for some more episodes of News from the Front.